Standard 7th Subject Geography Chapter 9 Let's learn about agriculture. In this picture we see a standing crop, a plowshare etc. From this it becomes obvious that this is a farmer's house. A farmer keeps hens, sheep, goats and cattle. They are also seen in the picture. He gets milk, eggs etc. from them. He sells hens, goats to earn money. He does all this for his subsistence, that is for his existence. All these occupations depend on natural factors. All these fall under agriculture. These occupations are supplementary to the cultivation of crops. Supplementary means to support, for extra support. Agriculture has a wide scope. For our basic needs of food and clothing, we make use of plants and animals. Besides the cultivation of different crops, rearing cattle, sheep and goats, maintaining poultry farms, keeping bees, which is also called beekeeping, sericulture, means silk farming, is the cultivation of silkworm to produce silk. Horticulture is agriculture of plants for food materials, comfort and beauty for decoration etc. Orchardry, PC culture that is fish farming, pig farming, emu farming etc. are included in agriculture. In agricultural occupation, resources like manpower, animals, implements etc. are used. Advanced technology is employed. In agriculture, cultivation of crops is considered to be the main and most important occupation. In modern technology, you can see the second picture here, drones to modify Indian agriculture industry. So, th like this, there has been an advancement in technology in the field of agriculture. In this picture, we see the changes in agricultural practices. In the past, primitive man had to wander in forest to sustain himself on the collected forest produce. Later, he learned the art of cultivation and started getting greater production from the land. Through this, he could provide for the whole year's need for food grains. He also started obtaining a number of products through floriculture. Floriculture means flower farming, horticulture, rearing animals, pisciculture, etc. Abandoning nomadic life, he undertook different occupations related to agriculture at the same place. Now let us get introduced to the different occupations that come under the scope of agriculture. We use the products of these occupations in our everyday life. These traditional occupations are allied activities in agriculture. Allied activities means closely connected to agriculture. Let's begin with animal husbandry. Rearing different animals and obtaining various products from them for subsistence is the core of animal husbandry means raising the animals and getting valuable products from them of variety is the core means central part of animal husbandry let's begin animal husbandry with dairy farming cows oxen buffaloes etc are reared on for agriculture related work rearing milch animals and animals which can be employed in farming is also an occupation. It is considered to be an inseparable part of mixed farming. It has become quite commercial in recent times. In India, it has started changing recently. Commercial dairy farming is mainly undertaken for meat and milk. Next, we shall learn about sheep and goat rearing. This is also a traditional occupation that is generally carried out in hilly tracts and semi-arid regions with dry climate. Sheep and goats survive on short grasses, shrubs and acacia which grow in remote hilly rural areas away from urban settlements. In India, it is mainly undertaken for meat. Sheep rearing is carried out to obtain wool. So, in this video you can see how wool is obtained 
through ship rearing. Next, we shall learn about poultry. Keeping hens and other fowl in a common is a common practice in all parts of the world. It is a traditional occupation. Today, it is carried out as a household occupation and also on a commercial basis. Running a poultry on a commercial basis requires a lot of care. For this, scientific methods are employed. In India, this occupation is generally located in the areas close to big cities as they provide a ready market for this occupation. In some areas, rabbit, pig and emu rearing is also undertaken. Next, we shall learn about beekeeping. This occupation is undertaken to obtain honey and wax. Bees, in order to collect honey, hover around the plants that bear flowers. This promotes the process of pollination. As a result, the trees bear large number of fruits and the crops yield increase. Beekeeping is an important occupation with respect to agriculture. Next, we shall learn about PC culture which is also called as fish farming. Farm ponds are dug out for this purpose. Water is stored in such ponds. Fish seeds are released in the ponds. For this, seeds of freshwater species are used. In order to achieve the best growth of fish, scientific methods are employed. Fishing in open seas has a number of risks. Different types of fish and other aquatic organisms get caught in the fishing nets. Separating them becomes a major task. All organisms do not fetch the same price. So, all these factors lead to the rearing of specific type of fish species separately. PC culture developed out of these efforts. Vam, Roha, Ravas, which is also called Indian Salmon, Columbi, that is prawns, etc. are reared in fish farms. So that's all about PC culture. Now, let's learn about sericulture. Silk thread is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth. This, these threads are very fine and strong and from these one can view soft silk cloth. Getting silk thread from cocoons and manufacturing silk cloth are independent occupations. Next we shall learn about nursery. In the last few years, the area under floriculture, cultivation of medicinal and aromatic plants and horticulture has increased. These plantations require a high standard of seedling, cutting, bulbs and seeds. This has led to the development of nurseries. Nurseries give good returns. Next, greenhouse farming. Greenhouse farming facilitates getting maximum product from the land. It can have a total control on natural factors like climate, heat, atmospheric moisture as well as soil moisture. It assists in getting maximum economic benefits. Greenhouse farming is highly specialized type of farming of the modern era. For erecting a greenhouse, galvanized pipes and plastic sheets are used. Its main aim is to control the pest attack by controlling water, light and temperature. Greenhouses are used on larger scales for growing flowers like lily and gerbera 
to give maximum economic returns. Now that we have studied about the different types of farming, now we shall move ahead to learn the types of farming. We have covered the topic of animal husbandry, beekeeping, pisciculture, sericulture, nursery, greenhouse farming. Now we shall learn about types of farming. Different types of agriculture have been evolved due to the geographical and cultural diversity and technological differences in different regions. The type of farming depends upon the purpose and aims of methods of farming. The crops being cultivated, the techniques used, land used, etc. Broadly, the following types of agriculture can be defined. So, types of farming, we can say that two types broadly classified are intensive farming and shifting cultivation in subsistence farming and commercial farming so in the types of farming we have subsistence farming here and commercial farming these are the two most important types of farming and then they are subdivided into different categories so let's begin with subsistence farming Substance farming is further subdivided into intensive farming and shifting farming. So, let's begin with intensive farming and shifting cultivation are the two types in traditional farming. Intensive farming is carried out in one and the same farm for years together. So, Intensive farming is carried out where? In one farm itself. In shifting cultivation, every year a new area is chosen for cultivation. After a specific period of time, old areas are again used for cultivation. So let's begin with intensive farming. Getting maximum production from a minimum area is the characteristics of intensive farming. Due to large population or limited availability of land, per head holding is small. This type of farming is mostly seen in developing regions. Farm production is sufficient only for the requirement of the family. In this type of farming, the cultivator and his family are totally dependent on the farming. As farm production is low, the economic condition of the cultivator is also poor. So in this type of farming, mostly animate energy is used, that is animals are used. Besides the cereals, vegetables are also grown to some extent. Now we shall learn about shifting agriculture. Shifting cultivation is a primitive type of cultivation. This type of cultivation is practiced in the tropics in densely forested areas or hilly tracts. The farmer initially selects a piece of land in the forest. In order to make it cultivable, he clears the land by cutting down the trees, plants, removing the shrubs and grass. Once the cut trees dry out, he burns them. The leftover ash gets mixed in the soil and acts as manure. Sowing and harvesting is done before the rainy season. You can see in figure 9.6. The production obtained from this is not sufficient to fulfill the food requirement. Hence, people undertake hunting, fishing, and gathering of bulbs and roots from forests. In this type of farming, the fallow period is longer than the crop period. After the productivity of the land depletes in two or three years, a different piece of land is selected for cultivation. That's why it is called shifting cultivation. So, intensive farming and shifting cultivation are the two categories which come under subsistence farming. Subsistence means sufficient only for one's use. Next, we shall learn about commercial farming. Commercial farming is subdivided into four categories. Extensive grain farming, plantation farming, market gardening and horticulture. Let's begin with extensive grain farming. Farm size is greater than 2000 hectares. These are the characteristics. Due to large farm size and sparse population in the region, this type of farming is carried out with the help of machines like tractors and crushers. So, 
you will see in the video that the tractors and crushers are used mostly for plowing the land as the farm size is greater than 200 hectares pesticides are sprayed with the help of helicopters or planes monocrop that is a single crop cultivation is the striking characteristics of this type of farming the crops are wheat or corn beside this barley oats soybean etc are also cultivated to some extent heavy capital investment is necessary for this type of farming since huge expenditures are needed for the purchase of machinery fertilizers pesticides go downs transport cost etc so lot of money is involved in this type of farming the problems in extensive grain farming are droughts attacks by pests locust etc so pests can attack the farms to a larger extent and even market fluctuations this type of farming is carried in temperate grassland regions next second point we shall learn about the plantation farming farm size in plantation agriculture is 40 hectares or above as plantation agriculture is practiced in hilly tracts use of machine is not possible and hence local manpower becomes important the crop for which the geographical conditions are favorable is planted this is a single crop cultivation practice too this type of agriculture does not produce only food grains only commercial crops like tea rubber coffee coconut cocoa spices etc are planted this type of farming began and spread mostly during the colonial period it is practiced in the tropics this time of farming requires large scale capital investment due to the long duration of crops use of scientific methods exportable production processing etc climate manpower deterioration of environment economic and managerial problems are the major issues faced by this type of agriculture this type of agriculture is practiced in india and other south asian countries africa south and central america etc so you can see the plantation farming in the picture where rubber tea coffee spices coconuts are grown on a large scale next we shall learn about market gardening market gardening is a type of cultivation developed in modern times this has developed mainly as a result of urbanization and the ready markets available in urban centers farmers cultivate vegetables and other items in the vicinity of urban centers to cater to the demands of city dwellers this type of cultivation works on a principle of economics demand and supply the land holding is small use of irrigation organic and chemical fertilizers low investment use of manpower demand of markets use of science and technology etc are the characteristics of market gardening it is dependent on good transport network the quality and price of the product is determined by rapid transport hence this type of farming is also known as truck farming next horticulture or floriculture cultivation of flowers and fruits is a sub type of market gardening fruits and flowers are the major products of this type of farming in this type of farming modern as well as traditional methods are used the size of farm is small and every plant is cared for properly in recent times use of irrigation chemical fertilizers greenhouse etc is being made for getting more profit you can see figure 9.9 the first figure major products of horticulture are flowers like lily gerbera tulip dahlia chrysanthemum marigold etc these fetch a good price in the market in figure 9.10 you can see 
different native and exotic fruits like mangoes custard apples grapes bananas pomegranates dragon fruits cherries oranges raspberries strawberries mulberries etc are cultivated in fruit farming at places like mahabaleshwar panchgani pune nagpur jalgaon nashik etc countries having mediterranean climate france and italy are famous for horticulture next we shall learn about organic farming this the nutrient require, requirements of the crops is fulfilled by soil and therefore replenishment of used up nutrients is necessary nutrients are also used abundantly abundantly to increase the yield organic fertilizers are prepared for this purpose the litter should be decomposed in the ground grasses like sesbania or jute etc are also buried in the soil for making manures cow dung and compost manures are used vermicompost is obtained from organic waste when farming is done using all wasteful matter mixed in the soil it is called organic farming for controlling pest organic pesticide like neem can be used the crop obtained from organic farming is high in quality chemical fertilizers and pesticides are not used in such a type of farming agrotourism agrotourism is a new field in tourism in the tropics various types of agricultural products are cultivated hence there is a greater scope for agrotourism in agrarian countries like rural the rural life local customs and culture are utilized for agrotourism see figure 9.13 city dwellers are curious about the farmers life and environment many of them visit rural areas just to see this agrotourism is financially beneficial for the farmer and his village use your brain power observe the pictures of some fruits and vegetables given in figure 9.14 it's in your textbook on page number 59 take the ones you like you may have realized that those fruits and vegetables that look fresh are and attractive may not have been ripened using proper methods at times in order to get the produce earlier artificial chemicals pesticides are employed profusely this facilitate quicker production and the produce appears fresh and attractive however these produce products are harmful to health also they do not last long after purchase so you should be very wise and careful while selecting your vegetables and fruits from the market now let's learn about marketing systems marketing systems are necessary for making the goods produced by the farmers available to the consumer at a fair price and in time the importance of marketing system in countries like india will become clear from the following points Agriculture in India is scattered over vast areas. All farmers are not organized. Most of the farmers are economically weak and cannot market their products on their own. That is why the system of agricultural produce market committees is established at the taluka level. At these places, farmers bring their produce and sell to the traders. As farm produce is perishable, means it can get spoiled. There has to be a proper arrangement for its sale. institutes like farmers organization consumer societies etc help in this task and try to protect farmers from the exploitation by agents mediators and others some of the farm produce you can see is directly used by industries as raw material as you see in the video international markets are now becoming easily available for farm produce due to globalization Many progressive farmers are using the modern technology in their farms. Also, they sell the produce with proper packaging. Hotels and malls also require agricultural produce on a large scale. By advertising on the internet, their produce gets sold in local as well as international market as you saw in the video. Do you know farming in israel israel is a major exporter of fresh farm produce it is the most advanced country as far as the agricultural technology is concerned it has adverse climate severe 
scarcity of water and more than half its land is occupied by hot deserts but overcoming all these unfavorable conditions and persistently following the path of modernization of agriculture it has taken a giant leap in the field of agriculture so dear students we have completed the chapter on agriculture do uh, read the textbook for a better understanding it has got a varied information on the topic agriculture stay safe keep learning and thank you